Hello, baseball fans, sports fans, life fans everywhere. Uh, I am your host, The Chosen Lawyer, and today we are featuring episode one, the introduction, our good friend, our brother, Steve Carsey. Steve, welcome to The Chosen Journey. Well, thanks for having me again. Uh, I love it. It's, it's going to be special. Chosen Journey, what a name, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, what we're about to what we're about to do and the journey that we're about to uh, go on. So people are listening right now and they're saying, hold on a minute here. So we just watched an episode of the chosen life podcast. We had the chosen lawyer. We had Steve Carsey talking about the life and times of Steve. And they're saying, what, what the heck are they talking about? Is this a new series? Is this a one off? Like what is happening here? And uh, I guess to explain, we're going to talk about the history of this, but imagine a book come to life. Imagine a documentary series, whatever you want to think of it. We have decided to take our, an idea we hatched 11 years ago, and we are making it real today. This is the introduction to the documentary, to the book, however you want to label it. And it is called The Chosen Journey. Uh, when we first brought this together, Steve, and we were discussing it, I brought you some working titles. And I made a note here that uh, way we were seeing it at the time, it was going to be the Steve Carsey baseball story and when I said that to you you came back and said chosen journey why well after thinking about it and our discussion uh, at the end of the day it's not about baseball only it's about life it's about what we do whether it be on the baseball field uh, in the lawyer's office uh, as a fireman as a policeman uh, as a truck driver as whatever it might be uh, everybody has their own journey. Everybody has their own story. And for everybody to be able to uh, connect with whether it be mine or another person, uh, I just felt that uh, we needed to bring everybody in to understand uh, a, a, a journey happens in life for everybody. And whether that journey takes us to many different places. The road will always uh, curve. The road will always change. Um, but it's a journey that's special for everyone. And uh, I just felt after our discussion, again, just talking about, uh, you know, involving and incorporating everyone along the way. I love that. It's very selfless, you know, and thinking of it that way. And but it's also, I guess, as far as how you see yourself in your life, you know, I could tell you that many times people tell me, you know, oh, you're the lawyer, you're the chosen lawyer, right? I tell them, I'm not the lawyer, I just play one on TV, you know, and I, I, I joke about that. But the reason why I say it, I said, look, there's many facets to me, and I don't consider myself just a lawyer, I consider it limiting, you know, I, it is part of my identity, I brace it, you know, I work around with the shirt, and we got the chosen lawyer, so I, don't, I advertise I'm very proud of being a lawyer. And in what I do, but I consider that I'm Jonathan first and foremost, and there's, and there's many points to me. And when you're saying that, Steve, and I'm thinking, you know, when we talked about 11 years ago, and it was going to be the Steve Carsey story is in essence, talking about your journey in life, your story, is it, it does part of saying the chosen journey part of it is also the fact that it's your journey outside of baseball as well, that you're not just defined by baseball. Correct. And, and that's, that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. Our job is what we do. It's not who we are, right? So, yes. you know, I didn't want it to be just about me and my journey. I wanted it to be about everybody and their journey, whatever that may be. Like I said, everybody has their journey and they have to make decisions. Uh, they have to make choices along the way on that journey. Uh, and that's going to shape their life and shape which way that they're going to go and what they're going to achieve. And ultimately, the future is, is a beautiful thing because we never know what's going to happen. We can live in the present uh, and we can worry about what's going on today. We can't change the past. So we live in the present and uh, you know, hope for the best for the future. And, and through that way, week to week, we're gonna to be touching upon the different points of your life. And it's going to, and like we were talking before we went on air, this is, there's no order to this. We can start at the beginning. We can start at the end. We're going to go in the middle. 
every week will be something different. You never know where, which point we're going to hit because there's such a diverse journey that you've taken in your life. And in that sense, you know, when people are hearing the story, they're going to get to know you, Steve. They're going to know the Steve Carsey story throughout the weeks, months, years that we do this. But on that token, you know, it'll hit back home to them. You know, where was I at his age? What was I doing in my life? You know, maybe it'll make them deeper reflect on themselves. You know, there's a quote that you gave in our interview on the chosen life that really stuck with me, you know, and that you go into a major league stadium and let's say, for example, Toronto Canada it could be any of the stadiums. And let's say it's a 60,000 capacity seat stadium. And imagine there's only 20,000 people sitting in there. You know how barren that stadium looks. That's more than the amount of players that have ever played in the major leagues, period. And that's still like, it's still blowing my mind as you said that. Yeah, I mean, the game's been around for such a long time, right? Everybody would think that there's many more people that come and go. Um, but baseball is hard. Uh, I try to explain that to uh, all the young kids that I coach, uh, my son, um, people that I come across. I'm like, to get to the major leagues, it's less than 1% of the people. It's really hard to do to get to the big leagues. And when you get there, um, and you achieve something like that, you should hold that dear to your heart. You should think that how special that is and how fortunate you are and all of the hard work you put into to do that. And again, it's not just baseball. It, it, it's you know something that people want to attain outside of baseball in whatever field that they work in. When you get to the pinnacle of what you're working for and the work you put in, you should take a, a, a second to reflect and understand how special that is and how special you are for making that happen. In, in, in my line of work as a lawyer, I use, I use baseball reference all the time. I love sports references because to me, sports is a metaphor for life in so many ways. Um, when I'm sitting and, and hiring, let's say, a first-year lawyer, and I'm talking to them, I'm interviewing them, I tell them, imagine now you're a player in baseball. And I used to work a lot with independent uh, baseball. It's, you know, in, in, in Toronto, Canada, that's where I'm out of. But I, I, I bring an example, it's a worldwide sport. And imagine now you are an independent ball player in Toronto and you're busting your butt and you are dealing with weather conditions and everything else, but you are putting in that time, that practice time. Do you have any idea how many kids are right now in California and Texas being groomed to take your job? You have any idea of the competition now imagine in cuba now imagine in mexico all over the world there are kids that are not fortunate enough to go to school so all they're doing is playing ball they're playing in the streets they're making homemade bats but they're doing whatever they can to get there and i tell this lawyer i said now imagine how many kids are singing law school right now they're going to be ready to take your job and that could be in any profession of life absolutely and that's where when somebody sees you steve you reached the pinnacle you reached the the, the dream that very few of any ever get to play one game in the majors and you got to have a career there. Like when you reflect on that, how mind blowing is that? Well, it is, you know, I mean, as a kid, I think, uh, you know, when you play sports, you think of playing at the highest level, you run through things uh, in your backyard when you're pitching with the bases loaded in game seven of the world series <clears throat> or you're hitting with game seven uh, with the game on the line um, and you play those scenarios in your head and everybody wants to to do that who are who's into sports but sports teaches you life lessons as you said it teaches you so many things it, t it teaches you to be humble it teaches you to be respectful uh, it teaches you to be a leader. I mean, there's so many things I could go over and name, but it grooms you, as you said, uh, for life lessons in the future about being on time, about understanding and learning, about uh, you know listening to a coach and being able to do what they say. Those are lessons outside of baseball that you can continue on in your life if baseball is not your final uh, landing spot. It's, it's to the point where you sit back after it's all done and you think, wow, did I just do that? And this is how long I've played because a baseball player's life is really short lived. 
I mean, the average, the average player's lifespan uh, in Major League Baseball is probably about 3.1 years. So all these people do not get to make all of that money uh, that is obviously seen on TV and seen in the papers and uh, the contracts that they're handing out. It's very lucrative. Uh, and you have to play the game for a long time and have to be, you know, consistent for a long time to, to be able to have that earning power. Some people do, some people don't. I was one of the fortunate ones that was able to sustain that through many of my injuries. Uh, over the total of my career, I had nine surgeries. So, yeah, so that, that just teaches you, uh, you know, how to bounce back, how to, you know, continue to grind and how to continue to push forward even through some of the dire circumstances that you might face along the way. In my mind, when, when we were hatching this and we're discussing, it's been a brainchild of ours now for a decade or more. But when I had the vision of it, I want, and I'm, I'm a listener and I'm a fan, I want to live in your mind. I want to hear what you were thinking when you played that particular game or when you had that particular conversation or when you made a, a decision as far as which team or where you're going in life. You know, you, you read about in the paper, you read about on the internet, and it's something that somebody interpreted and they put it out there. It's another thing to hear it from the person direct and to try to understand their mindset. That's one of the things when I pitched this to you originally and we had the basis of a book idea 11 years ago, I said, Steve, if we had done this, I think we would have made the biggest mistakes of our lives. Why? Because at the end of the day, the final product transcribed in my words to somebody to read, I don't know, first of all, how many people are reading anymore. They love to watch things visually, but they want to hear it in your words. They want to hear your thought process. And going through all those interviews, if we had gone through them at the time and not taped them and not seen them, I think that would have been the shame of it. Because now think about full circle, it's not about the final result of the book. It's the journey of getting to the book or the journey of getting the story out. And every episode is that journey. And the way we would have talked on the phone or talked visually and would have gone through this process, now you're all going to get to see this. We don't rehearse this. We have an idea of what the topic is going to be and what direction it might go in, but we have no clue. We freestyle it because that's how I would have talked with Steve. And that's how we would have taken our notes. And that's how a book would have been formed. So you get to watch a book live. But really, at the end of the day, this is the book. This is the documentary series, how you're watching it. So it's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that the special thing uh, about it is uh, as these episodes are going on and as we're digging into, into my head and understanding how I thought or how I feel, you know, um, I would love for, you know, your audience to be able to write in some questions you know, and, and give you some, some leeway to ans ask me some questions and, and find out what, you know, if there's something that they want to know, what, what that would be. Um, so I think that's, that could be a special part of what we're doing as well. Love that. And week to week, we're always going to encourage them. We're going to tell them this on the episode itself. We're going to put it in the comments when we post it. And this is going to be going on YouTube on the Corman's channel. It's going to be the chosen journey and it's going to be its own separate series it's going to be up audio as well and all, all podcast players i'm going to play it on the chosen life actually but it will be out there but if you want to reach steve you ain't going to find it unless you got his home number somehow which i hope you don't for privacy reasons <laughs> otherwise you're reaching him through us because he's not out there you know and that's why it's pretty cool also steve is at the end of the day like i told you in, in the uh chosen life episode we recorded you want to find Steve Carsey, you Google him 11 years later. Our interview from back then is still number one on the list. You have been the one ce celebrity ball player. You know, the name that people want to seek out there, they're not finding him because you managed to keep it private. And kudos to you. But now you've decided I'm ready to be out there. And uh, walk us through that mindset, uh, what, the decision to actually be week to week and actually engaging like uh, versus keeping it completely private. Yeah, you know, I mean everybody wants privacy, right? I mean, I think that's very important in our lives. I think, you know, when we grew up, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have iPads, uh, we didn't have all the electronics that, uh, you know, the kids and, and what we have in the world uh, are today. Um, so we were outside, we were playing, and the only time we could ever get a hold of somebody was in your house. You had a rotary phone, you picked the phone up off the wall, 
and you would call somebody and had to remember their number. It's not programmed in a phone. You can't text somebody and be, you know, uh, found any place, anytime, anywhere uh, back in the day. But now, uh, you know, you can pick up whatever. So I just felt like, uh, you know, keeping it private w was the best way. I, I did some of those, um, you know, interactive things on the internet with whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or any of those. And then it just got to the point where uh, that was consuming too much of my life. And I just didn't need to be on there. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's nice to catch up with friends. It's nice to uh, be able to, you know, talk to some people in the past, uh, whether it's high school or, or guys you've come across in the game of baseball that, that are still out there. But uh, privacy is extremely important to me and my family. And, uh, you know, that's just the the, the way I felt like uh, I could keep it. And now, you know, doing this with you, uh, this is just a small piece of, you know, uh, what I'm going to put out there personally. Uh, you know, everything else will still stay private with my family. But, uh, you know, this is something we talked about uh, 11 years ago. Uh, and and the book was, was going to get started or it was started in the very short term of an introduction and, and things just happened where we didn't proceed with that. And then, you know, 11 years later, the technology supports what we want to do and, you know, what people crave and what people like to look at and listen to. So here we are and, uh, you know, it should be fun. It's funny, you know, I, um, I, there's questions I've always wanted to ask you and I've never asked you this. So now I get to ask you this live and, you know, this is never about hurt feelings or anything like that. It's, it's open, it's real. And whatever comes to mind is the best way, whatever's organic, you know? And one of the first things I'm going to ask you is when we did have that interview, I was lucky enough to find you when you still were on Twitter and that's yeah. how we connected originally. And I always knew you as the guy traded for Ricky Henderson and I'm a Toronto guy. So I'm like, you know, we always had our Steve Carsey rookie cards and uh, we always rooted for you home because, you know, you were our next great uh, hope uh, for pitching. And we were also sad when you got traded, but understood why the time to win a World Series. But that being said, we connected. We got the interview down. You know, you, you, we had never met in person. We, 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 had, we had met, you know, virtually that way. We eventually started talking on the phone. Question, what connected us? Why were you ready at that point to even consider writing a book with me? Like, you know, I wasn't Stephen King. What do you feel was your mindset at that time? when we first connected and why that process at that point? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, after 2006 was, was my last year, uh, I ended up stepping away. I had shoulder surgery again at the end of 2006. My body was, was beat up and uh, it was just time to step away. So I had been away from the game for a little while, 2007, 2008, nine and 10. And <clears throat> you can only play enough golf. Right. I was living in Texas at the time. Uh, you know, I was playing a lot of golf. We were there. And in 2010, my son was born. So I got to spend some time with him at home. I uh, got to understand what being a parent is, the responsibilities of, of that. And, you know, after we connected and we talked and I gave that interview, um, you know, it, it, I felt like, wow this would be a really good time because there has been a lot of things from the time I was a young child to the point, you know, in 2011, when we spoke on that interview that has happened to me, uh, you know, along the journey as so to speak, as, as we're talking about, and, and it was a journey and there was bumps and there was ups and there was downs and there was highs and lows. And I mean, so many things happened in that, in that time span. I'm like, you know what, maybe it's time uh, with you to get the story out and let people know that, you know, good things happen along the way, bad things happen along the way. But at the end of the day, you can have a lot of peace and, and a lot of tranquility uh, when you step away from something and, and you're not in it anymore. I'll tell you, my friend, that when I made the decision to walk away from LV reports, that was my baby. I, ate, breathed, and slept that blog. And I burned out real easily because uh, I was doing everything at that point. You know, I was the webmaster, I was the editor, I was the writer, etc. And that was a rookie mistake. You know, you, you learn, you know, one thing we talk about teammates in the in our episode together, 
you got to have the right people surrounding you to help you succeed. If you try to do everything on your own, it won't happen. And when I made the decision, I remember telling my head writer and I told him, you're taking over the site. And he said, why? Why now? And I said, I'm done writing about life. I'm going to live it now. So I need to go take care of me. I have life health decisions and I'm doing that. And I will tell you that walking away from LB reports for all that time and energy I put into it and seeing it grow, it was the easiest decision in the world. I knew at that point where I had to be at. The hardest part of it was that we didn't get to do that book at that point because I, I, I was at the point in my life that it was just not the timing for it. And I, that's a regret I carried for 10 years. And I thought about it all the time, you know, because I have not done anything creatively since MLB Reports. It's funny, I built up a law practice and being a partner at a law firm, but I yearn to, because I'm a writer by nature and I just, it's something that comes not, it's a gift. It's a gift. I tell people the words just flow through my hands. I don't have to think about it, you know? <laughs> the way you throw a ball is the way I write. And now the, the written words are spoken. And when, when, when The Chosen Life was born, I said, I'm seeing it now because I love baseball to, to pieces, but it's too limiting. I have too many other interests. And, that, and when you're saying this, again, I see the tie-in because it's one thing to talk about ball, but we're not gonna very, just going to talk about ball because there's, it's a life to it. It's your story. It's our stories all together. And I can tell you that creatively, I feel extremely satisfied knowing that there's no regrets in life. Everything happens for a reason. And the tie-in for me at the end of it was the fact that when we first spoke was when you were getting into coaching. And then when I reached out to you out of the blue, true story, folks, I reached out to Steve and say, hey, how are things going? And Steve told me, I, I just stepped away from the Brewers. I said, what, what do you mean? I just saw you on the website. He goes, it's not announced yet, but uh, I will be walking away. And then as we kept talking, I said, I think serendipity has chosen that this is the time now. You know, So it's amazing how we, you had one journey starting and another one beginning now, and just the timing of it, it, it we couldn't have timed it better, eh? Yeah, I mean, the, the timing is... Uh impeccable i mean it, it in you know when we talked in 2011 now in 2022 how you know uh the the cross path or the paths cross again uh to where we want to go and what we're doing in our lives uh you know it's it was an easy choice uh i say easy choice because family comes first um with the brewers for the brewers to stepping down um you know They've been through a lot uh, over my coaching career. Started in 2012. My son was uh, super, super young. He was, you know, one and a half. And, uh, you know, when you're coaching, you're away from home for a very long time. And, um, you know, you miss a lot of things. Uh, the first five years, a little bit easier because they were able to travel with me. They were able to come to wherever I was coaching in the summertime. But, you know, once my son's school started, uh, it became uh, a, a much tougher road uh, to be able to spend more and more time with my family. And then ultimately, you know, I've been I was coaching for, um, you know, 10 years. They've sacrificed so much for me. And I, I just felt like it was it was the time to uh, give back to them and give more of me uh, to my family. Uh, since they have given me so much uh, during my my coaching career. I can tell you that uh, I've been following you very closely uh, for those years and writing the story in my mind, you know, very often. But I had a journey ready for you in my mind. You know, it's funny. We have journeys for ourselves and I had your journey all planned out. I saw it all clearly. I saw you're going to be the pitching coach for the Indians one day. You're going up through their system. That's where Steve's going to end up. And then probably going to be a manager at some point in the bigs, maybe eventually front office. Then I find out about the Brewers. He, he finally, he, he worked hard in the minors, got himself up to the majors, bullpen coach. I see pitching coach one day. I see manager. It's funny. I had all these stories ready in my mind, but I'm not the one who writes them. You have to live them. And here you go, and you write a different chapter and a different story for us. So it's funny, and, and I'm sure all the fan, the ball fans and your fans all thought similar things, and they, they cooked up all sorts of scenarios, you know, but here you make you end up getting making the decision up. Obviously, it's your life, and you get to choose it. Yeah, things happen that you don't expect them to happen. Um, I never expected to get an interview with the Brewers after the 2018 season. Um, I was driving in my car, actually going, picking up my uh, son's 
birthday cake. Uh, and I got a call from the Indians front office and they said that uh, the Brewers had called and asked them uh, for an interview for the, for, the pitch, uh, for the bullpen coach job. And they asked me if I wanted to take it. And I was basically like, are you crazy? Of course I want to take it. I mean, this is what I've worked hard, worked on and worked hard for is to get an opportunity to, uh, to get back to the big leagues. I got to the big leagues as a player. And, you know, when I started coaching, uh, I gave myself a timeline and I said, I want to be in back in the big leagues by this timeline, which was five to seven years. And, um, you know, uh, that opportunity presented itself. So I was fortunate enough to get the interview, fly to Milwaukee, take the interview, and then uh, ultimately uh, being offered the job and, you know, just having the opportunity to work with such great people, such great players, uh, great front office staff. Uh, the three years I spent with the Brewers were was a tremendous honor uh, and, and just a, a, a heck of a time uh, watching those guys play. That note, this is going to be a great point to pause. So imagine you're reading your book now and you're reading The Chosen Journey. You've just finished off the introduction. Next week, we're going to come back to chapter one and we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to see what topic we're going to pick from there. So please send in your questions uh, for Steve Carse and he'd love to hear them. We're going to pass them along and you never know when your question is going to appear on The Chosen Journey. So until then, talk soon, Steve. Absolutely. Thanks.